So we're here at the Caribbean Cultural Center, and this is an amazing uh, exhibition with you and Joe Conzo, both um, having a lot of shots of pioneering artists in hip hop and other genres as well. Talk about how you got your start in photography. Well, um, originally my mother was a photographer. Um, she's a photojournalist. She was a photojournalist. She's passed away a few years ago, but she, um, my mom was known for doing a book on Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. And so I saw a lot of her photographs um, during that, you know, my younger years and I would look at them and stare at them and they turned out to be a big influence because half of my work is portraiture and half of my work is sort of photojournalism, documentary kind of thing. And um, so I actually got all of that from her. So um, my father, gave me a Canon AE-1 when I was about 15, 14, 15, and then I worked for a photographer named Larry Brown, and then I just caught the bug. I built a dark room in my bedroom. I went a little crazy. <laughs> and you have uh, so many iconic um, people. How many of them did you know personally? How many of them did you get to know after you became more established? Well, um, some, well what's funny is the biggie thing Biggie and I lived in the same neighborhood, and he went to a school around the corner, and he and I knew a lot of the same people. I didn't know Big until I was working, doing shots for Puffy and Uptown Records. Um, so he, be, you know, he became a personal friend because um, this, the, this, this shoot wasn't even for Uptown Records. My man Earl he was like, yo, let's go to Link with Big, and we're going to go take some pics. Okay, boom, I was going. So a lot of them, I, I was actually friends with Yasin um, before. Um, Jessica Caremore and I were friends. Um, most of the other people I met through photography, you know, um, and that's the lovely thing about photography. Sometimes you get to meet a lot of amazing people. So a lot of it is just, you know, relationships, sometimes it's assignments. You know, then you get to be cool with people. You see them later on, yo, what's up, you know. Okay. Heavy was mad cool. He and I stayed cool. Unfortunately, he passed, but, you know, um, I wish me and Rakim stayed friends, but, <laughs> but it's all good. And also, you know, everyone's saying we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop now. And I, you know, I, I talked to Quincy Jones once about this too. It was like, hip hop isn't new though. Like you've had like people doing break dances from the 1930s, you got the Nicholas Brothers. You've had like, um, you know, Rudy Ray Moore, Pig Beat Markham, Last Poets, Watts Prophets. What, what exactly is 50 years old? I think what it is, is the amalgamation of all of those elements. You know, you, you had, traces of it that, that went way, 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 way back. I was watching videos of groups that I never heard that were, um, what are the kind of the groups that are like, dum -dum 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 -dum. I can't remember. Do -wop? Do sort of do wop but kind of. Um, Acapella, dude? Yeah, and they would, and then the waltz and the boats and the one and the boats and they walk down the street and the beat and the, you know, that whole kind of thing. That, that, that was hip hop right there. That was rap. Especially what they're doing to with rap now. So, you know, hip hop is, is a culture. You know, so I think what it is is during that time is when you saw all the kids wearing, you know, the the the, um, the shirts with the crew letters on them. And you lived it. You wasn't trying to be it. You threw your Kango on. You had your your BVD shirts. You know, what I'm saying put the, the crew shirts on top of with the leaves, with the press lines on them. You got either your Adidas or your Pumas going, you know what I'm saying, with the little suede front. And you got your bomber jacket, got with the fur on, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was hip hop. So to me, it was just a way of life, you know, and it's never left me, you know? And um, so yeah, that's what I see as, as far as hip hop and it being born. You mentioned Farrell Sanders. So how much of influence has jazz and other genres of music been to you? Well, you got to really think about a lot of the early samples that we pull from, right? So a lot of, you know, like you listen to maybe like a Nas premiere joint, that sample is from a jazz record. You know, you listen to a Pete Rock joint, a lot of his stuff was pulled from jazz records. And so, Jazz has a big influence, you know, the way that a key, a piano player would roll like that, the way that those hit 
you know, it, it lended itself to hip hop beats so well. So like Pharrell Sanders to me, like he did the creator has a master plan and you know, and when they remix a lot of that for, um, I think it was Red Hot and Blue um, kind of joint. And if I'm not mistaken, I, did, I, I do believe he, it was created as a master plan. And um, you know, that was used on like a crossover hip hop jazz record. Then you had guys like Guru who did like jazz matazz and stuff like that. So you had that direct cross of um, hip hop and jazz and its, its fluences. And then when you would hear certain singers and so forth do scatting, like all, all of it is this word syncopation along with rhythm, so forth, which we do in hip hop with, with rap lyrics. Well, especially, I don't know about that much right now, but at one point, that was the way that you would distinguish yourself from your flow and your style. So, um, and, and Rakim, when I photographed Rakim, um, he told me his first love was playing the saxophone, you know, and which I was stunned. I was like, word, God, you play saxophone? He was like, word, yeah, I played saxophone. So I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I heard this story way before he told a lot of people that it was during the photo shoot. And then you, then you listen to the way he rapped and so forth, and you can see like, oh, okay, you're rapping like a saxophone plays. Right, and you go, damn, that's crazy. So jazz has so many layers of influence on hip hop. And also, you met so many of the greats. Who are the, some of the people that you regret maybe not getting a chance to meet and take photographs of? I just mentioned that I didn't get a chance to photograph Gangstar. One of my favorite groups, Daily Operations, one of my favorite albums ever. Um, so Gangstar has got to be on my list. Um, yo, Nas, I, you know, Nas and KRS. Yo, y'all got, if y'all listening, please, let's do a sitting. You know, um, I love Nas, I love KRS, lyrical giants and geniuses. Um, I'm trying to, I, I photographed Latifah, but I'd like to have a sitting with her. Um, I photographed her in the studio with uh, Tony Dofat, but I would love to, if I had an opportunity to uh, do a sitting with, with Latifah. Um, I think she is one of the lyrical giants. Um, and, uh, and MC Light. And ironically, in, MC Light and I went to uh, I don't know, third grade or whatever, school together, a school called, called Wei Shushule in Uhuru Sasa. So uh, if, you know, listening, yo, I'll add it. <laughs> Cool, cool. And, I, and I know for this, also since, you know, being in New York uh, all this time also, did you ever get into the rock scene at all? Did you ever go to CBGB's, any of the clubs and get any of the rock artists? Bro, I'm, I was in there listening to Fishbone. I was in there, listen, I was, listen, I was a bone, Fishbone head. <laughs> you know, um, Bad Brains, um, psh, I, just so many groups, you know, Undergrounds, the whole BRC, Black Rock Coalition, you know, my friends. I, I was neighbors to, um, to Corey Glover, um, who um, sings for a living color, and, um, you know, see Vernon and so forth. So, no, I, no I'm, I'm, trust me, I love music. You know what I mean? So if it's good music, I love it. And, and trust me, I was a hardcore black rock dude. <laughs> you know, you might not know it, but, <laughs> but for real.